everyone. Welcome to Interfaith Odyssey. I'm Azar Ali Zadeh, and as you know, this program is all about respecting and knowing all different faiths in our community. This program is sponsored by uh, Metropolitan Christian Council of Detroit, Windsor. Before the topic, let me introduce our good friends from different faiths, and they are Mr. Sanja Gupta, yeah. the son of uh, Mr. Gupta, which yeah. we are very, very happy to have you here. Same Welcome. Here. Same very here. good. Then we have Najah Bazi from the Muslim community. We have Mr. John Sachs from the Baha'i community. Father Roach from the Christian community. And Ramin Singh from the Sikh community. Today's topic is about the judgment day or doomsday or whatever you call it. Is that really a, a fiction or is that a fact? Is that a fairy things? Is that just a story in books? Um, how many people you think in these days really believe in judgment day? Mm -hmm. And if your religion talks about that, we would like to know. Uh, you know, and many times in past few years, some priest or some, somebody uh, talked about the last day of uh, this earth and the judgment day is coming and nothing happened till now. And another person is saying now the 21st of December is going to be the end of the world. Uh, really, do you think this is something that we will have it at all? And all about Judgment's Day. So we're going to start with our good friend, Neja. Hmm. <laughs> well, we do not believe that December 21st is the end of the world. We believe that no human being will know when the end of the world is. This is God's secret, and it's on to God only. Um, we have indications that it seems like since humanity, everyone anticipates it's like around the corner type of a thing, <laughs> but nobody really knows for sure. We call it Yom al um, And while people use the word Judgment Day, it's really not an accurate um, manifestation of the word itself. It actually means more like the day of resurrection, more the day of when everyone will stand. And in that day, and in the, that time, and it's not actually that day, what will happen is um, before that, actually, as, as we talked about earlier, there will be a time of peace. There will be the golden age, and that golden age will last and exist, and there will be equity and peace and human justice, and uh, the, we the weak will inherit the earth type of a thing, and um, there will be a lot of justice before the day of, so it's of not Kiyama. <laughs> But it's not this like awful day, but there will be a trumpet that will sound from the heavens. The earth will have its chance to speak its word. And we are told any male or female whomever created has done an atom of good, they will find it. And an atom of bad, and they will find it. But the actual judgment is a weighing of your scale so that you yourself judge yourself. Not that God is a punisher, but that God is so just that he allows you to look at your own life, and we are very deed-oriented in Islam. And if your scale weighs high on the good deeds, heaven is your abode. And if your scale weighs low on the good deeds, then it is the mercy of God to decide what to do with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Najah. You're welcome. Father Roach, you tell us about Judgment Day. I think the guy who predicted December 21st is going to be awfully embarrassed <laughs> when December 22nd comes around. I mean, I just wouldn't want to be there in the process. Um, but within the, the, the Catholic Christian scripture, uh, one of the base prayers and the base declarations is, uh, he, he ascended into heaven, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. When that is going to happen, uh, there are quotes from the scripture, just a couple here. I, you know, I'll give you what, as I teach in school sometimes, I'm just saying, you know, Daddy didn't tell me that one. He kept that as a secret for himself. Uh, I don't know if that quite hand handles it all, but 
Here's a quote from St. Mark, the Gospel of St. Mark. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And then a quote from the earliest Christian community, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7. It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. So how do we take a look at it? Well, I think that, you know, now uh, you were sort of like altruistic, as I see it, you know, in the process. But um, the scripture that um, Matthew talks about when the, the day of judgment is, you know, the last chapter of Matthew uh, before the, the Passion. Uh, and it says that um, uh, he will assemble the world before him and the sheep and the goats, he'll separate them. And those who have done good, you know, will go to heaven and those who, who uh, have not done well. And we're talking about feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the homeless. We're not talking about magnificent works of uh, work, we're just talking about ordinary things, doing the ordinary things, doing them well. Those people who have done that, you know, will, you know, be in heaven. And those who have not done that, those who have not taken care of the little guy, they'll go to hell. They'll depart into the fires of Gehenna, prepared for all time for the devil and his angels. Mm. So it's not quite as, you know, altruistic and, you know, like, oh, it's going to be happy days. Uh, but it, it would be happy days, of course, if you've Take done the ordinary things and done them well, you know. Thank you so much, Padre Roach. And now you tell us, sing. Um, so for six, um, and in the sixth scripture, heaven is defined as being connected to God and hell is defined as being disconnected from God. And so our life's journey and our life's goal is to find that connection while we're alive, attain that higher state of consciousness. And we consider the human life to be a great good fortune because it's the only life form that is able to make that judgment and to be the one that's able to find God um, and to find their true self, the God that resides within me and the God that resides within all of God's creation. So this question of judgment is very clear. We are being judged on a daily, moment, moment by moment basis. And it's our thoughts and our deeds and our actions that are being judged. It's not enough just to do good deeds, you must have good thoughts. And it's not enough to have good thoughts, you must have good deeds. And it's also not enough to have either one of those, it's very clear in the scripture, you must also be meditating and connecting your, your, your soul and your mind with God. Otherwise, ego comes in. If I do a lot of good deeds, I get egotistical about it. So it, it's a big responsibility. And the world will end. The world will end for me the day I die. Mm -hmm. Anything else, as we've already said, is, is, the, is, held, is held by God. It's very clear in the scripture that this is a great game God is playing for his own enjoyment, and that this has been done before, that the earths and the heavens have been rolled up and compressed before, and they've been rolled out before. We don't know how many times, and we don't know what part of the game we're actually playing. We just know that our role needs to be to find our path back to God. And that judgment that will occur, or is occurring, constantly will determine the fate of our soul when this body dies. So that's the, 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 the path we're walking. For us, it, the goal is not to be born again. The, the goal for us is to have the soul rejoin, to go back to its true home. Because the, the soul is really the, my, 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 the only permanent thing. Everything else will die, right? Everything else is temporary. Um, this earth is temporary, we know that. But the soul is permanent because the soul is a part of God. So the goal is for the soul to go back to its true home and the only way it can do that in Sikhism is through Simran, which is meditation, and Seva, which is service of God's creation. You must do those two things. Um, and if you are doing those things, then you're that then your path will be true. You will know that while you're alive. You don't have to wait till you're dead. And um, you won't have to take birth again. And you'll live in eternal bliss. You'll be in eternal bliss while you're alive. Once we are in that still higher state of consciousness, we'll be in heaven. And we'll remain in heaven um, for forever because we'll just, we'll be permanently with our true father, our true home. So that's, I guess, the judgment. Doomsday is not really addressed. That's, that's the, a secret that's held by God, but um, you know, when there, and it's immaterial. When, when the earth ends is, is unimportant to us, really, because that, our journey is, is completed much before that, so. Very good, mm -hmm. thank you, Raman. Now, John, you tell us about the judgment day. Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> big topic. Small topic, big topic. <laughs> okay. First, is the world going to end on December 21st? <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> okay. That is because of a lot of things. To cut to the chase in one sense is to say this. Baha'is are taught that Judgment Day, the Day of Judgment, the Day of Resurrection, first and foremost, these all have a greater application, a greater meaning. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what they really speak to is the dawn of every manifestation that has come to this earth. This goes to the heart of the Baha'i belief of progressive revelation. And this is very important because Baha'u'llah teaches us that all religion comes from God, that God is in his essence unknowable, and that the reason we know about God is because he so loves us that he would not have any of us be bereft of the breath of his voice. To that end, he has sent his messenger to all peoples on earth, and that the reason we see the differences in the religions on earth is to be attributed to the fact that God sent his messenger to different people at different times to meet different circumstances. Mm -hmm. But that each of those comings was judgment day. Each of those comings was, was the day of resurrection. They have to be understood in that context. Mm -hmm. And so it's made very clear in the, in the Baha'i teachings that there will be other manifestations after Baha'u'llah. He is not the last. This process is continuous and will continue so long as man will exist. And this is the way God communicates to mankind. So first and foremost, for each of the revelations, the day of that revelation's birth is judgment day. The day of that revelation's appearance on this earth is the day of resurrection. It has a symbolic meaning and should be looked at that way. Collateral, however, each of the revelations as they appeared were spoken of by all of the other revelations before them. So there are things that appear in the scriptures of all the holy faiths that speak to the coming of one after the founder of whatever that time is. Those times are also referred to as the day of judgment, as the end of the world, or as oh, I've seen one interpretation of this term in the, in, from the Greek Bible that basically says, and perhaps a better translation of the end of the world is not the end of the planet, but the end of the system of things. The age. And that mm. this is the meaning of the end of the world. It's the end of the system of things. And this is indeed something that each of the manifestations of the messengers of God. This is an effect of their message on mankind from age to age. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. thank you so much. They now, the term end times. <laughs> yeah. end, yes, end, end yes. Time. yes, yes. End time. Very yes. good. Mm. Now, Mr. Gupta, you tell us about the judgment day in Definitely. Hindu. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So as far as the doomsday or judgment day is concerned, in Hinduism or in Vedic philosophy, there is no such final day. Mm -hmm. But we, as we have all heard from all the panelists here, that we always believe in good, we always believe in bad, and we always believe in judgment. So this concept also remains in Hinduism as well. But where is the key difference, as you two pointed out earlier, that differences, Hinduism believes, it's a, it's a cyclic. It's happening forever. It's happening infinite numbers of years. It's happening whether it relates to humans, is you talked about good or bad deeds, or it's happening to universe when it relates to the matter. And this fundamental cyclical behavior, cyclical phenomena, is based on two philosophy in Hinduism. The first one is called law of trinity. So what is that? That that is God, souls, and matter is ever existing. So there's no, cons uh, no question of dissolution, no question of um, that everything will be destroyed. So they are ever existing. God is the master of all. So that's the fundamental law. The other one is called law of karma. Now this relates to the human beings, that how they're getting judgment every day on their bad or good deeds. And of course, good deeds are always 
uh, deeds of compassionate, deeds of service, deeds of relation to the God. So this is what that means. The God of God gives the judgment based on law of karma. And hence, your law of birth comes in where the soul, since they are ever existing, takes another birth. And the cycle of death and birth, cycle of just, uh, creation or dissolution continues forever and forever. Now, very specific question whether the world is going to end on 21st or not. Here's Vedic. According to Vedic math and Vedic calculations, they give you a duration of this existing universe. And duration, total duration of this universe is 4.3 billion years in human life. So this is the calculation. How many years have been passed? Almost 2 billion years have been passed. The life of this universe, what's left, is 2.3 billion years. This is, where the, this is based on Vedic uh, philosophy. And that's when the dissolution, dissolution will happen. And what happens after that? The whole universe goes into a deep sleep. And then what happens after that? Next creation starts. And hence, it's a cyclical. It goes on forever. And it's very similar to what science is saying today. That dark, whether it's about dark matter, whether it's about called God particle, or whether it's called bang, Big Bang Theory, and it's happening. The, and also law of thermodynamics, or law of uh, your conversion of matter or energy, that they can never be destroyed. So this philosophy and based on that, I hope that sheds some light on the Hinduism and the Vedic philosophy. Thank you. Good, good, good. So any of you think maybe in another planet there is some life, people yeah. like us or souls like us? All yeah. things are possible. Yeah. <laughs> All things possible. Well, in the Baha'i scriptures, Baha'u'llah makes some very interesting yeah. statements about that. Yeah. Because he makes it very clear. He said yeah, that, 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 that in the universe, for every, there, that, that, every fixed, that every fixed star is without number. There are as many fixed stars in the heavens as there are grains of sand in the sea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that for every fixed star, there are planets. And on every planet, there is life that no one can measure. Oh, wow. so, so the worlds of God are infinite in their number, infinite in their range. It's fascinating because at the same time, Baha'u'llah also describes worlds of God from a spiritual point of view as well. So there's a physical application, an infinite number of worlds, so yes, and an and infinite number of planets and, and, and life beyond measure. On the one hand, on the other hand, our journey in the other worlds of God, notice I just used a plural, mm -hmm. okay, is, is, is of such import and such measure that, that the journey can only be described in terms of multiple worlds, not merely as a single place. I think the scientists would have a little bit of trouble with that, mm -hmm. uh, to tell you the truth, because I mean, I think that, you know, I think religion and science are not opposed to each other, and they go, what you're talking about is a, you know, is an infinitesimal, you know, yeah. scenario. They send just curiosity, yeah. and they are finding traits of water in... in yeah. But, yeah. but that's, that's a planet we know. Uh, Mars yeah. is there, but I, I think that whatever is out there is, yeah. you know, and I don't think that, you know, I can say yes or no, mm -hmm. but I still you know, think that it's, it's the wonder. I don't think the end times, and I'm very comfortable with that, I don't think the world is going to be destroyed. Why would God want to destroy this magnificent creation that is there? Whether, you know, whatever happens, I don't know, but I would say, you know, looking at the, the, you know, the wonderful universe that's there, out there in the solar system, I've seen, you know, books from the Hubble, pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. It's magnificent. Mm -hmm. Why would God even want to even think <laughs> of ending this? Maybe we have something more magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> we never know. Something already out there. We I know. think it's oh, yeah. interesting, all of the rolling up you know, we have that phrase too, and I, I, a couple of us said that, right? That the yeah, earth that will yeah. roll up like a scroll or something like, a like scroll, that. Like a scroll, right? Yeah. Exactly. Rolled it in. I think the scroll was already open, and that's where it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> put it this way, Father, there's a Baha'i statement that says that the old world order is being rolled up mm -hmm. and a new one laid out in its stead. So we are witnesses in this day of the twin processes of both a tearing down 
and yeah. a building up. It, it's a cyclical phenomenon, at all, all existing in today's nature too. You look at the seasons. Yes. You know, you you would think why the leaves will come down as we talk about a fall now, and then it, will come and then it comes again. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the water cycle. You take a look at the wa water gets recycled. Same thing with the air. Air is also getting sick. Uh, it's it's a t you know when the oxygen becomes carbon dioxide, and comes back. So the whole system in this universe, and this is what Vedic philosophy believes that it's it's a cyclical, it's circular. And nowadays, a lot of scientists are also exploring that w whether that theory is true or not. Mm -hmm. You know, and they are starting to believe uh, to a certain degree that yes, it is cyclical because of the Big Bang theory. That how they exploring that out. Mm -hmm. We also have the coming of the messiahs. Yeah. Which yeah. we didn't talk about. would make a great show. That's true. Yeah. One mm -hmm. day soon that we talk mm -hmm. about what that coming is. Because I'm really curious to in, in the other two traditions to see what is said about that, um, the second yeah. coming of Jesus or, mm. you know, the yeah, great messiahs. And very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. yeah, would be good. The dawn of the intellect. Yeah. I was just yeah. kind of curious when we were talking about, you know, um, all the terms that we all use the same terms. We use resurrection, we use the end of times, and it's all, they're all in all religions, it seems to be all the same t terms that we use, and we're very comfortable with all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as, you know, I think it was, um, uh, I think it was Pope John the 23rd said, or maybe it was Francis of Assisi, there are more things that we hold in common than separate us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, yeah. the word Jahannam, we say Jahannam, which is Hell. the hellfire, mm -hmm. and you use the word Gehenna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, there's so many more things that we are, to, uh, we are together and then that, that separate us. We, there's all a basis, but of course, Christianity was floating around and the Hebrews were floating around before, you know, the Muslim faith, before <laughs> Baha'u'llah, you know, before the Sikhs. Not before Hinduism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, but Hindus were floating around way before. Years, <laughs> I'm not, no, 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 I buy that one at all. Oh, it's a, every one of you understood it differently though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. meaning was different, right. even though everybody right. acknowledged it, but mm. it was different. Because even because yeah. the end of times has come and gone before. This yes. isn't exactly. the first time. So we have many ages that we've lived exactly. through. So. And that's what well, John The thing said. you said was so profound to me, which I, I, I fully agree with. You said that hell is being disconnected Absolutely. from God. Absolutely. That's and right. I really, when you said that, I felt like that is so very true. That's and right. maybe hell could be a physical place in some of our traditions, but the real hell is the disconnect. Watch Indeed. someone in anger sometimes. They're that in is hell. hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is hell. <laughs> that is hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I don't know how many more minutes we have, but question for you and perhaps yeah, for sure. you, Mr. Gupta, is I know you say usually when we die, if you are not very close to God, we come back here. Yeah. Anybody comes back and remembers anything from the first uh, life they had right. here? Those that are fully enlightened know all, know yeah. all of their lives and know everything. So, so there's... So do they come back? Yeah. Uh -huh. We, we, so go ahead. Oh, please. go ahead. Now I would just say the example is, is, is about genius that we see in the world. You know, a lot of, a lot of people have seen Nobody has taken, I'll take a very hypothetical uh, example, but they've seen the pianos, pianists will play piano without taking, taking a lesson, maybe a very small age, that Four is completely, old. yes. <laughs> this is what we call in Hinduism, and you would agree, is sanskars. These impressions on souls have been done through what they have done in previous lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of people you will see, they have good from the start. They're compassionate from the start. Some other souls or some other human beings are completely it, evil, I would say, for any a lack of any words, but from the, from the day one. So where does these impressions and where this comes, this is the evidence that we see that there so must have been something uh, happening in their previous life because otherwise the God has created us, everyone's equally. So that's, the, that's where you see the evidence. And I also there's actually two or three cases in India where people have remembered Similar thing like Vedas, I would, I would say. They would remember those slokas, but even though they've not gone to college or school yet. But there is rare cases where you actually you see the number. But the evidence in terms of what's happening when, you, when the start is equal. Right. We're all human. Even to the same parents, start is different. 
And, and I think so. that they, they talk about full enlightenment, and those that become fully enlightened, you know, have full knowledge, um, not just, and it, again, they talk about it in the scripture that they start to, their drishti is the word we use, their vision yeah. becomes not limited to just their life and their present circumstance, it becomes all-encompassing. But they also start to speak less, and they start to, because when you become one with God, you know, you, you start to get, gain great power, and so, We've always known that those people start to talk less, share less, because they're, they're going inward. But um, it is clear that people who become fully enlightened, you know, because they talk about, yes, we, you know, we all come together for a reason. We have time with each other and um, connection with each other for a reason. And you know, we, we don't know how we were connected right. previously and why we've come together again. Um, so there is, you know, we, we do hear that, but people don't like to expound upon that yeah. because it it starts to unravel the mystery. Mm -hmm. Interesting. May I just interact? So, sure. Vedic philosophy believes in cause and effect fully. Every effect that you see, whether it's, it's not a coincidence. No. Anything that, whether it's about humans, whether it's about um, any um, deeds or things that are happening in the world, um, it's very, uh, very well governed and very well has a reaction and a reaction reaction, which is also similar sense of the so Thank that's you. where we'd like to conclude. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, uh, that was interesting, and I think we can talk one more time about like free will and this world and what's going to happen. Thank you for these questions. I hope you have the answer, and I hope we see you next week. Have a nice day, and thank you so much.